Welcome back for part two of our Stumps Trip Adventure post-Hurricane Ian. We're going to finish up our sharking and shelling on the beaches, then uh, bring you back, show you what got found and what got made. Thanks for coming along. Welcome back. Well, we finally have made it back to Stumps Pass, which had been closed for quite some time after Hurricane Ian. Let's go check out and see what we find. to this olive shell. Here's another one of our pretenders. This is actually a crab claw. Oops. Looks like a shark's tooth, but it is not. It's from the pincher on a crab. Still neat. Oh, look, this little orange scallop. And this looks like a tooth to something though. No, nope, a pretender. A piece of shell. A piece of worm snail colony here too. So there's more than just shells or uh, fossil teeth here. There's all kinds of nifty things. Oh my goodness, do you see it? Wow. That's a nice one. Oh, and there's a piece of coral next to it. Let's pull these two guys out of the waves. Amazing. Oh, a little canthus. No, broken. Broken canthus. It's like the ocean is pushing them in. I don't see what that is. But I turn around and I look and I see more teeth. Like all over. are getting a little higher now and washing things under the top of that pile. Boy, you have to be fast. Things disappear very quickly.
is a really beat up old one. Piece of a tooth to something, but I'm not really sure what. This pile around. Maybe washes out of it. Maybe one of those round things. This one looks like a show piece. Oh. Piece of fragmodon, piece of fragment of a megalodon. Yep. Nice. The waves are coming faster, and it's getting harder to catch stuff before it gets blown up past you. Over here. Oof. Oh my gosh! Soak again. We're getting closer to high tide now. Where I'm standing was just waves washing to me, and now I'm in the water, and the waves are getting higher. getting heavier and I'm finding a little bit less as it's getting rougher. Ooh, that little cutie pie though. Take him. What time do you think it is, babe? Huh? Oh yeah, we'll take that. So focus on shark's teeth and not paying attention to the other stuff. That's just rock. Mine's bone. That may be another piece of a frag. It's definitely bone. Yeah. He's broken, but... Yeah, we'll take him. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> we'll lose that. Uh-oh. And I lost my necklace. Oh, shit. It's right, it was right there. I just saw it. Uh-oh, there it goes. There it is. No, don't run away. Got it. <laughs> How's that for a good eye? There's a tooth right there. Ooh, nice. All right, I gotta get this necklace put up here so I don't lose it. And then we gotta see what time it is. We're probably gonna have to go before too much longer. It's starting to get kind of late.
All set for us to head back, honey? All right. All right, we're picking up to leave. I look down. <laughs> I found this one. This was in one of the piles that John scooped. Amazing. Absolutely amazing day. Found so many neat things. Well, thank you very much, Stumps Pass. We had a great day of finding. Did you find something else? No. It's pretty chewed up, but it might be. Jeez, I'm not sure if this is a tooth or what this is. Well, when in doubt, we take it home. Exactly. When in doubt, we take it home. And every time I look down, I swear I see something else. Like right there. Piece of a stingray barb. Unbelievable day. I guess I better keep the camera going until we get back to the car. We might find more stuff washed up on the beach since uh, the area we checked has had the tide coming in and all sorts of stuff washing up now. I think there is a little bit of red tide here still. So all of a sudden I started sneezing and my nose is very runny. It's definitely a rock. Yep, that's a rot. But here is a piece of coral and a couple of pieces of bone. We'll take those guys too. sure what this is but it's definitely bone take a look at my book when I get home see if I can identify it every time I look down I think I see something else oh. we have found a bunch of cool stuff today but it's already 4 o'clock, the sun's going to start going down, and we've got an hour-long ride home, so we're going to stop here, and uh, then we'll get back and show you what we found. One of the trips I made down there. And uh, before Ian, it had been really good shelling down there. But since Ian, things have been a little wonky. So I didn't find usual amount of shells that I normally do down there. And that's okay. I mean, some days they're there, some days they're not. But let's take a look at what we did find. We got some little lettered olives here, some serifs, one little auger. A mossy arc and some turkey wings. Ooh, this piece of a zigzag flat. I do love those. A juvenile fighting conch with some really nice stripes on it. A little chestnut turban. We have two buttercup lucines and a thick lucine. This is a yellow prickly cockle, and so is this. It's just extremely faded, and it has a bunch of holes in it. I don't know why I thought that was neat looking, but I, I just brought it home because I did. We have some broad rib carditas here. Very small spiny jewel box. And you can see when the spiny jewel boxes are small that they do have a color to them, like a reddish brownish color almost. And then as the shell grows out, it turns white. We have a little apple murex here, a piece of coral. We have a boring turret snail. And you can tell the difference on the turret snails versus an auger or a serif 
by looking at where the hole is. See how this lies flat, whereas this kind of comes down to a point? So these guys are kind of cool. A big cut rib arc, a base scallop, and some calicos. This is just random pieces of who knows what fossil. And things like this wash in on our beaches all the time. They look sort of like rocks. Um, likely they're pieces of rib bones and foot bones and, and who knows what. But um, generally what they just call this is unidentified megafauna because <laughs> there's just no way looking at it to tell what it possibly came from. Um, this could potentially be uh, some tooth enamel from something. Really very hard to tell because there's just not enough of it there. And then let's talk about this up over here. We have some lady and waiting Venus clams, a calico scout, or I'm sorry, a calico clam. This is a painted egg cockle. And this one was a little different for me. Clearly not the same shell as a lady in waiting. Um, the shape isn't quite right. It's flatter. It should be deeper for a lady in waiting. So what I believe this to be is a princess Venus clam as opposed to the lady in waiting. Now this one here could be a lady in waiting or could be a lightning Venus clam. They all look sort of similar. Now let's just take a look at our book here. There's the lady in waiting clam. There is the lightning Venus clam. And there is the princess Venus clam. So they all look relatively similar and the markings is what you usually go by. But sometimes the markings don't always match up with what you find in your books. So this one's iffy, could be lady in waiting, could be lightning, not sure. That one's definitely lady in waiting, but I believe this one actually is the princess Venus clam right here. And that's not a really, uh, I guess, common shell for this area. It's rather uncommon. And I'll show you that here. This tells you your distribution. If it's a double line instead of a solid one, that means it's not often commonly found. Lightnings we find here, and Sunray Venus and Calico Clams we find here. Lady in Waitings, they're very, very easy to spot. But this Princess Venus Clam is a little harder to come by in our neck of the woods, which would be right there on the map up in Tampa Bay. Uh, it's very, very good to have this book and others as a reference. This is my very favorite shell book. Just thought I'd share it with you guys one more time because I do love it. And I can't thank the Witheringtons enough for the amount of work that they put into this field guide. This is just fantastic. What a great reference. All right, so let's pick a few things to work with. I really actually kind of like this egg cockle as fragile as it is. It's just so pretty. Yeah, let's see what else. I do like that zigzag piece right there, that flat. And, hmm. How about that little cutie? And we'll clean that one up because it needs some help. And then I want to try some of these flat pieces, just seeing if they'll, a hole will drill in them. I'll, I'm going to take some of these thinner ones, not the really monster thick ones. I'm not really sure exactly what they are, but I don't know. They just, they intrigue me for some reason. I think they'd look really great paired up with some teeth. So we're going to try drilling some holes in these flat pieces and we'll see what happens. We have one more teeny tiny little gem to talk about. This little guy right here, look how tiny that is. It looks like a piece of rice almost. That is a dwarf olive. Super, super cute. And as tiny as it is, here, I'm gonna just put my index finger in there as a reference. I mean, it's literally like your fingernail. There's almost nothing to it. Absolutely adorable. The world of tiny shells is fascinating. Um, I don't know if my eyes are good enough for tiny shelling all the time, but every once in a while when I find one, I just think they're so fun. And 
see, I've got a towel laid out. My bags are labeled. See, I have kind of a system. I don't get a chance to often bring stuff home, work with it that day, clean it, drill it, everything. It just scheduling wise for me doesn't work out because usually after I go to the beach, I'm quite tired. And I need to, some downtime, some rest time, offload the camera time. So I have stuff in bags and I label them. And you'll see here, Ancloak Key. And this one's called Sunsu Sunset Bust and Honeymoon Hall. You guys haven't seen that video yet, but uh, hit two beaches in one day there and got quite a nice selection of stuff, especially Littles. And this was some trips to Stumps Pass, which is kind of heading towards Sanibel, but not quite all the way there, but below Englewood and Nokomis and all that kind of stuff. So it's about half the way. Uh, you can see I've got some, some fossils and some cool shells in that bag. So these are the things that I'm going to be working with today. Oh, I debated whether or not I should show you my my system and my shame. Oh, golly. Before, I've been collecting shells and stuff and doing this jewelry thing since before I got the GoPro. And Honey built me a desk for me to keep all my stuff. You see, I've got things labeled, this huge tote of stuff. This all needs to be done up with uh, a run through muriatic acid and a sorting and a cleaning. Some of this stuff hasn't been rinsed off completely well just yet. But I have things labeled from where they came from. There's a bunch of fossils down there too. There's my bucket of stuff from Sanibel. I got so if my voice sounds a little muffled, that's because I've got my safety gear on. I've got my mask on and I've got my uh, glasses on, my apron. And you'll notice hair back as well, so nothing gets tangled. All right, let's get ready to have some fun with this stuff. I'm smiling, you just can't see it under all this gear. <laughs> Got this guy that needs to have some barnacles and junk just scuffed off. This one, which is like strawberry lemonade, so pretty, just needs a drill hole. Same with that, same with that, same with that. This Morton's cockle is very, very, very fragile. Rather than wire or drill holes in this, because it is so fragile, I'm going to fill this thing up with some resin or some glue or something and attach it to the rock this way. So I'm not actually going to do anything to that because it's just so thin and so delicate. If you don't know what it is, it is not scientifically significant. Um, we also do have fossil hunting permits as well, though, that uh, allows you to fossil hunt. Because you're not actually supposed to do that unless you have a permit. So our club that we belong to, uh, we all get our permits. And then we're allowed to go do some neat things that the club organizes, which is pretty fun. Now, this was not from a club trip. This was just my own trip. And it was right after Ian, so it's a little while ago now. I've been on so many adventures, I hadn't had time to sit down and work with this stuff. Drilling fossil bone is going to be a bit like drilling regular shells. I mean, this stuff might be a little bit harder, actually, but it's porous as well. I definitely want to work wet doing this. I do not want to be doing this stuff dry. With these guys, I'm going to do the same. Now, I could drill a hole in this and wire it to here. Um, first things first, I'm probably going to even off that lip so it sits a little better and a little flatter. And like this one, it is a little on the delicate side and I love the stripes and I don't want to hurt this piece. So I'm considering whether or not to do it this way and put two holes here and have it hang that way in the center. Or to put it like a sconce kind of on this piece. That's going to get a hole to be hung. That one's going to get a hole in it too, as well as that little zigzag flat piece. So yeah, and then this one will just, like I said, spend some time with the, the cutting wheel and the brush and stuff, just getting that junk off of there. It just pops right off with the cutting wheel, you'll see. Normally this part you guys see on time lapse, and I put some music to it, because, I mean, it was got you know, be a little boring to watch. It takes hours and hours to do some of this stuff, so I try to condense it so that you can see what's going on a little easier. 
I'm gonna turn this up to three and a half ish, roughly. Oh, that's a good speed. And we're gonna just hit these barnacles and they're gonna smash right out of there. See that? Look at that junk, just coming right off of there. And there we go. Got most of that off of there. Just got a little bit left up here to get. Which, the angle I held it at, I couldn't really see that. So, right when I think I'm done, I get it wet. Look at it again. Feel it. Where did that extra little bit of junk go to? I think over here. Nope, right there. There we go. And at this point, this is, in my opinion, ready to be drilled. It doesn't need anything else to be done to it. And can move on to the next one. So you can see this little process takes a little time. That's why I run this through at high speed with some music so you get the idea of what it is I'm doing without the the tedium, I guess, of watching me do it the whole time. <laughs> anyway, so that, when I get done doing the cleanup, I just leave it off to the side, because it still has to be drilled. The rest of this stuff doesn't really need uh, any cutting, it just needs drilling. So we're gonna go ahead and switch this out into a bit that will drill holes. We drilled them in here, you saw all this stuff swirling out of the piece as the bit goes through and then the dust and debris gets into the water. And over here, we are drying out. And I just need to put them in front of their little bag so I know which trip it came from. So yeah, there's that piece of flat shell that it's all drilled out. That's really, really cool actually, I love that. So there we have it. I'm gonna go ahead and process some more of this stuff and see you guys back in a few minutes.
First really cool necklace. I'm loving how that came out, man. It's just uh, it's a lot different than a lot of things that I've done in the past, and I really am rather struck by it. I may keep this. <laughs> I just like this a lot. I may keep that. That's nice. Oh, I don't know. I'll have to think about it. But either way, I love the construction of it, and I love it that it's just so unusual just you know some random piece of stuff off the beach that no one knows what it is or really cares because it's broken and just turn it into something awesome yeah i'm liking this a lot Ooh, little jump ring turned on me there we go boy Mm, boy, that's going to be hard to part with. I like that. <laughs> but if I end up keeping it, I'll try to make something similarly close to it. And I do have a couple of uh, pendants already to go here. These are the drilled bone pendants. And I thought they were nice by themselves, but that they were a little plain. So I found a couple of shells while we were there too, of course. Can't leave those behind. And I've just gone ahead and glued them on to here. And now I'm going to put some rhinestones on them. And we'll see how that goes. Boy, they don't behave very well without glue helping, do they? Get up there, you. <laughs> Go far. <laughs> Although it did look kind of nice on that zigzag that it landed on, though, that flat shell. That was kind of cool. That would actually be kind of pretty on that. Oh. Oh. 
camera crash. My goodness. Sorry. My bad. That's more like it. Hmm. It looks kind of nice. Hmm. Okay. I'm just trying to see how many sizes I have here in this little mix, and I'm I'm gonna go with three. It looks like there's three different sizes in here. Maybe four. Just a few out. There it's four. Okay. Alrighty then. Four it is. Big one's gonna come here. Bigger medium size, smaller medium size, smaller. And got him face up. And I have switched, you'll notice, to this uh, new background here. This is an actual beading mat. This is meant for holding beads on it because when you drop them, they don't go rolling all over. See that? Well, that one did because it bounced off another bead, but yeah, when you dump out beads, they don't take off across the table like they do with some smoother stuff. And I'm not sure if folks remember Velux blankets. I don't know if that's a, a term that means anything to anybody. But that's what a lot of bead mat material is made out of, is the old Velux blanket material, actually. Alright, now, take those back off and find some glue. Okay. Got our glue applied. this up so that that doesn't slump. But these little things that hold the tweezers shut look like they're right about the right size for that. Excellent. All right. I'll just wait a few minutes for that glue to dry and try to keep this thing with gosh yeah that's gonna look nice on that a couple folks have asked about uh, these little rhinestones and I got them oh my gosh forever ago off Amazon in a kit for doing your um, well you know the, the acrylic nails where they, they paint the powder stuff on and Anyway, these are from a nail art kit. So if you you can find some on Amazon, they've got all kinds of little charms and doodads and everything in them. But I, I just really wanted these. Mmm, that is pretty. I like that too. Yeah. Nice. Oh, so cool. Alright, so 
was looking at these two pieces, and you know, they're cool. Don't get me wrong, I like them, they're both really nice, but they need a little something. And I thought, oh, look at that adorable little shell. That would be so cute on that one. Oh, yep, I love that on there. And then I'm gonna give this one the same line that I gave the egg cockles, the chakra cockles. I'm gonna put a line of those on the different little tiny colored ones. These guys are gonna go on here. And I've got this little guy kind of filled up with glue. And I'm just going to set this onto it. And just put a little extra glue on there. Make sure that it stays on. And just painted that little line there. Sorry if you can hear the dog grumbling behind me. <laughs> Don't know what he wants. I think he just wants attention. He likes that kind of stuff. See, I still got some of that glue on my back of my hand. Get a little more on this and start placing these guys. That's kind of fun on the black. Now this is one of those clay shaping tools that I've sort of repurposed for doing rhinestone setting that actually works really well for me for these small ones. And in the same set came this little fellow with the uh, chisel tip. And that's good for getting things in a straight line and helping swipe off some extra glue. That looks cool. I like that. These, the colors great together. And it, it would make a nice stack, but it really hides how pretty that shell is. So I don't want to do that necessarily. But I do like how the colors of these go together. That yellow is picked up beautifully in this scallop and the pinks are picked up really perfectly by this one. So what's going to happen here is these are going to get layered and a little chain tassel is going to go behind that's going to suspend this and a couple of other little doodads from the bottom. Kind of dress it up and elevate it and make it a little prettier. I have these little guys that I made a little while ago for a different project and I just made a bunch of extra ones and I didn't need all of these. And these aren't necessarily shells from here. These were in a, a bag of shells that was given to me by somebody that was meant for making jewelry out of. So I thought, hmm, this one has this nice yellow on here that goes really well with that and with that. This cute little bell flower and these little pearls, which, and I don't know if this is picking up on the camera. To my eye, in person though, there's a nice streak of lavender right, there's a streak of lavender basically right through this part of the shell and right through this part of the shell. And it just picks up these colors so beautifully. So I'm just gonna find a couple of little yellow ones to go with this. And yeah, this is gonna get cut apart. These little white and dark ones, they really don't match. And the blue is a nice pop of color, yes, but it's not quite right for this project, I don't think. So let me get these little guys all out of here. And look at it again now. Oh my gosh, way better without those there, way better. Look at that. Mm. Pretty. So now, no, nope, I think the white's a little jarring. If we're gonna put any pearls with this, it should be cream colored or this, this neutral. Yep, that's it right there. Excellent, all right, game plan. Now, 
I need to move a few things out of the way. I'm not messy. I'm creatively organized. And to make a, we're gonna make what's called a wrap loop at the top. And this works really good with thin jumper or head pins. Okay, see this? See how this is just flipping like this? This is a really thin gauge wire head pin. And they will make a nice beautiful wrap loop, which is exactly what this is right here, where you wrap one end of this back around itself and it just keeps it nice and secure. So you'll see I grab this here by its end, right up tight to where the beads are. I'm just putting a little bit of pressure on that. And then I bend this at a 90 degree angle. You don't have to keep the pressure anymore. When you wrap the wire around there, that will tighten. Okay, so we grab some round nose pliers. Hopefully this uh, shows that they're Unlike these, which are flat and then kind of rounded on the outside, these guys are round all the way around their little barrels. So if you want to make a loop, go in here, got the wire in between the two, bend the wire up over this top part of the jaw of the plier, release. Now move to the bottom and go the rest of the way around. That forms your loop, which you're about to tighten. So I squeeze this a little bit better, smaller. Then I'm going to hold that in these pliers and grab the end of the head pin with these. And I'm going to wind, going around, go around, let go, move the pliers. Go around, let go, move the pliers. Keep repeating until this is nice and snug against your beads and there's no slop in here. Just keep grasping and releasing and pulling it around the other wire. And then you're gonna get to a point where you kinda can't go anymore, things are tight, it's about as good as it's gonna get. Cutters, and we take that excess right there off. Oh, that went flying. Yeah, so be careful if you do that. Make sure you're kind of aiming it a bit away from yourself. So we've got a couple of other doodads here to attach jump rings or make these kinds of things too. So let's go ahead and speed through that. to where I want them. Put them together with a jump ring, add that to this, add another jump ring to put it on the back of here. Oh gosh, that's so pretty. Beautiful. Yeah. Stretch this out, see how it looks. Oh, super, super cute. Adorable. Love that. Alright, this guy's looking good. The rest of this dries. I'm gonna put some clear coat over this. And let's see. I guess just regular old necklaces for these guys will, will do nicely. That actually is kind of pretty with that. And I'm gonna put it on a silver jump ring but leave this on the copper because it pulls in that brown color from the edge very nicely. But I don't want to make everything copper today. Oh gosh, yeah, I like that. That's really cute. 
cute like that. Cute. Cute, cute, cute. Beautiful scallop, wow. Stunner. Really, really nice. Alright. Go ahead and get these guys on some cords. Let this dry a little while and then let's show off. The ones that are still drying, I put some clear coat on. These guys still have to dry yet, so it'll be a little while. Actually, I think this one is almost dry. And that one. Both came out pretty awesome as well. Go ahead and get these on jump rings when they're dry. And we'll put everything on cords so we can see it at the end when we do the recap.